momentum. Momentum. It's a vector. So this is our last of our units to cover in our pre-APC uh, review series here. We're going to talk a little bit about momentum and what it is. So if you remember, momentum is a vector, and we use the symbol P for momentum because momentum starts with a P. Uh, actually, it has to do with, uh, there's an old word, petera or something that has to do with like a force, but anyway, uh, also M was already used for mass, so we use P. Uh, this is mass times the velocity vector, and that's equal to the momentum. The momentum is a vector as well. This is for any object that's moving, it has momentum. An object that has no velocity has zero momentum. So this is actually something that we all have a lot of familiarity with coming into uh, this world and into physics. You know, you get out of the way of the moving car because uh, it hurts, or the you know if somebody throws a ball at you, you uh, I don't know, run away. Uh, and so we're going to look at using momentum for single objects and then for systems of objects, just like we did for energy. Momentum is most useful when we're talking about uh, interactions like collisions, instantaneous, or not, inst things that happen over a short period of time. And so we're looking here for a single object like a ball bouncing or uh, somebody hitting a ball with a bat or a car crashing into a wall and stopping. Um, these, are, these are the sorts of things that we would analyze using this model of single object momentum. What we're going to talk about for that is an impulse. And this is our equation for impulse. Impulse is equal to the force times the change in time. So these are both vectors, the impulse, and of course uh, the symbol for impulse is a capital J because impulse starts with a J. And then here we've got force and delta C, the amount of time that that force is applied for. This is assuming a constant force over this period of time, or at least an average force over this period of time in this case. Uh, we'll see some more advanced techniques for dealing with this later on. Now, impulse is actually equal to the change in momentum because impulse changes the momentum of an object. So here's our sort of whole equation. And every piece of this is equal to every other piece of this. When the momentum of an object changes, uh, it's due to the force times the amount of time it's applied for. Um, and we get that as well for these other ones. It equal to the change momentum. These are just sort of definitional uh, things. And so as long as you know some of these, you can figure out all the rest of them. Now for systems of objects, we instead go to conservation. Just like we did with energy, we look at the conservation of momentum in this case. And the thing that's different here is momentum is a vector. So even if you have two things moving, they could have still a total momentum of zero if they're moving towards each other with the same equal and opposite momentums, or equal and opposite momenta if you feel like using that archaic plural. Uh, so the big thing here is that for all systems of objects, if there are no external forces, the change in momentum is zero. There's no change in momentum. The initial and final momentums are exactly equal to another, as long as there are no external forces. This is where you're going to start with any collision problem, basically just from here. Uh, if we sort of generalize this, I'll write a couple generalizations and you can see the equations we'll use for that. Here are general equations that we've got. The sum of all the momenta at the beginning is equal to the sum of all of the momentums at the end. So if we have just two objects, it would be like this. The mass 1 times initial velocity 1 plus mass 2 times initial velocity 2 is equal to mass 1 times final velocity 1 plus mass 2 times final velocity 2. And that's basically the way that this works. If you've got multiple objects, they're coming together. And of course, these are all vectors, even though I didn't write the vector symbol on them. Uh, a thing to remember. Um, and make sure that you're paying attention that if you're doing this in one dimension, that your velocities pay attention to the signs, the directions they're going in. And if they're in opposite directions, they should have opposite signs. And if you're looking at two-dimensional, you've got to break this up and basically do an equation like this for x, an equation like this for y, and uh, that'll get you there. So hopefully this gets you caught up for this momentum unit as we're coming to it. Um, that's all I've got to say. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please uh, don't hesitate to ask.
that's what I'm here for. Good luck with the year. See you in school.